The next Pixar animation film finally has a trailer, and we're all wondering, has Disney successfully quieted the noise? Or are we going to see another Strange World, another Lightyear, another Proud Family? Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Hello, I am Joe J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place. I am here with Mr. Vash Sky. Vash, you doing all right, man? I am doing fine. I am, uh, but I, I must say, Jonas, uh, considering the uh, topic of the day, I'm very envious of your voice today. Oh, it well, sounds was... especially nice. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if I if I go down like this, it, it starts to sound like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and I was wondering, uh, are you feeling anxious, sir? Are you uh, feeling no. <laughs> embarrassment? Are you feeling ennui? Ennui. Very, very interesting. I, not, not any of those things. I don't. I don't think anyway. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, what Disney has been up to lately. This from Pixar, Inside Out 2 trailer, sorry, this from Hollywood Reporter talking about Pixar. New emotions voiced by Paul Walter Hauser, Ayo Edebiri, enter Riley's head. Envy, ennui, embarrassment, and anxiety show up, personified by animated characters as the latest feelings in the Pixar sequel that finds the original's main character, now a teenager. This by... Eton Blessing, or maybe Eitan, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, sir or madam, sorry. Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2 has dropped another teaser trailer with three new animated characters. Um, uh, the uh, Ennui, voiced by Adele uh, Exarchopoulos, uh, sharing main character Riley's now teenage mind, joining Amy Poehler as Joy, Phyllis Smith as Sadness, and Louis Black as Anger are Maya Hawk as Anxiety. Edibiri's new and perpetually jealous animated character, Envy, Exarchopolis's bored and eye-rolling ennui emotion, and Hauser voicing his burly yet red-faced character of embarrassment. Mm. Well, here we have it. New emotions. I would say that they're uh, they're probably actually mental states more than emotions, but whatever, to each his own. The sequel also features new voices for fear and disgust. Tony Hale, other known, uh, otherwise known as Forky in Toy Story 4, you know, trash, uh, <laughs> is replacing Bill Hader, Hader, and Lisa Lapira is replacing Mindy Kaling as disgust. I think that if I'm, if I'm, if I'm tracking this, I think that Amy Poehler was the expensive one to get back, and everybody else said, oh, we, we want expensive money too, and when Pixar wasn't willing to pay that out. Uh, I think that's why they ended up getting rid of Mindy Kaling and uh, Bill Hader. Right. And maybe some story uh, <laughs> refinement along the way in order to reflect that, right? That's true, because Bill Hader was a story guy for Pixar. He was in he was in the writer's room for many Pixar films and uh, was doing a pretty great job there. Now, the thing that we want to focus on here is what's actually in the trailer as opposed to the story and the trailer. Here are Riley and a new character in Inside Out 2. Uh, she shows up at high school, and uh, I, I just got to say, that uh, appears to be a very glamorous shot uh, right there. Also, if this is a teenager, this is an inappropriate outfit. I'm just going to point that out. As a dad, I would tell, if my daughter dressed that way, I would go tell her to change. Um, but uh, anyways, to each his own. Uh, there is uh, Riley, and she's very excited to meet this girl with all the piercings and the uh, brightly dyed hair. Again, what's up with the outfits here? These are supposed to be teenagers. It's not a flesh market. Uh, oh, oh, here's a very dreamy vignette look right here with those uh, darkened outlines here. Uh, uh -huh. It looks like may maybe there's some more dyed hair. And uh, again, guys... I, I don't I don't know. They need to be focused on their studies here uh, more than whatever it is they're focusing on. And uh, here we have, I don't know if this is supposed to be the same character. Oh, look at this nice, uh, diverse and inclusive group here they have in uh, San Francisco. Well, it is San Francisco, so maybe they don't care what their teenagers dress like there. It's not. Yeah, um, I, if you can detect a subtle hint of uh, judgment on my part, well, maybe that's accurate. Uh, but let's go to these uh, character profiles here before we we have a, a more free discussion here. A few Inside Out 2 character descriptions have been released. Valentina Val Ortiz, voiced by Lilimar. Lilimar, by the way, uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, she played the little girl who has her um, entry into womanhood in the preschool show, uh, Baymax, where uh, Baymax uh, helps her to understand how to use tampons and instructs her on, on, on menstruation and uh, how that works out. And, of course, Baymax goes to a local 
uh, pharmacy, drugstore, I don't know. And the entire aisle of people help her to uh, help. Sorry, help him. Sorry, Baymax is is uh, male presenting. And so want to make sure I make that clear. This male robot is uh, being helped by an entire aisle full of people in uh, in in what tampons to go take to uh, Lilamar's character back in the restroom. By the way, she's locked in that restroom and Baymax forces his way into the restroom. Another boy from the school also forces his way into that. Yes, uh, sorry, I, I, I must be mistaken. It's a preschool show. None of that would ever happen, but maybe you can go check out an episode of Everything Woke about Baymax and see whether or not that's actually what happened so the new lilamar is uh i'm sorry the lilamar is the new john Rat ratzenberger is that right so it's a, oh, it's a pixar man. classic if, i hope that ratzenberger is uh is still doing pixar stuff just because i just because i i want them to have that tradition to have something of tradition here anyways um you know of course uh baymax is a disney animation character not a pixar character but uh sure oh well anyways, i guess that's true. Let, let's keep looking here. Anxiety, uh, the previously announced new arrival bound to shake up everything in headquarters and beyond. A bundle of frazzled energy. Anxiety enthusiastically ensures Riley's prepared for every possible negative outcome. Okay. That's one way to look at it. Yes. Uh, Envy, Ayo Adibiri. Uh, Envy may be small, but she sure knows what she wants. She's perpetually jealous of everything everyone else has, and she's not afraid to pine over it. I, I wonder if they're adding all of these negative emotions to uh, teach people to not be that way. That's uh, that's probably good. I hope it's not like uh, the first Inside Out where where they decide that sadness and joy need to live alongside each other. I don't want anxiety and envy to live alongside everyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ennui. Mm, ennui. Couldn't care less. Bored and lethargic with a well-practiced eye roll. Ennui adds the perfect amount of teenage apathy to Riley's personality when she feels like it. Hmm. What a haircut, by the way. Embarrassment likes to lay low, which isn't easy for this burly guy with a bright plush pink complexion. I'm, I gotta say, I have my doubts. Vash, what do you think of all of this? You know, we know within Disney, it's it's um, a little bit activist oriented, right? And they just can't help themselves with the messaging. They just can't help themselves. In fact, I'll give uh, uh, Jay Rasulo credit on this when he was uh, talking during uh, Trian's down town hall. Mm -hmm. He he referenced the Disney cone, right? The sight lines within the park, and it's like, okay, well, the company's products should reflect this idea of. You know, not having the outside world intrude on the experience. And I think that's very accurate here, but they just can't, they they can't do it, Jonas. They're not capable of not uh, taking this in the direction that I think uh, people might feel uncomfortable with when I hear, you know, emotions like envy. And when I see, you know, the characters that we just saw uh, in, you know, Riley's orbit right here, I... I don't know. I get a little nervous. I just, I do. I yeah. I'll I'll say that really. I, if Inside Out Two was clearly marketed as something for people that are above a certain age, then yes, that's that would be fine. But of course, with Disney, everything that they make is marketed from two years old to fourteen years old. Uh, that that is that is if you if you go look at their financial statements, they clearly state those are the demographics for their films and anything that would be on. Uh, Disney Channel or below is 14 and under. Now, of course, the the sinking feeling that we have is these are actually marketed to adults with a thin sheen of childishness in order to uh, get away with uh, some things here and there. I'm a little concerned, as we've often talked about, about anxiety being marketed to a four-year-old uh, and the idea of atriogenesis, the idea that, okay, kids need tools to deal with anxiety, but they don't need to know that anxiety exists. You know, for those of us who are actually paying attention to what Disney is up to, I, I, I would put this right here. This looks like a children's book. It may be a gag children's book that they're trying to sell to grownups, but the idea of go to sleep anxiety here, um, I, 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 if you were a parent and you were thinking, or an aunt or an uncle, I would put this in the aunt or uncle phase because aunts and uncles don't actually have to put kids to bed often in in this way but if you're trying to introduce this idea of anxiety keeping people from going to sleep i have a problem there because telling to someone that they have anxiety often increases anxiety and this is a, something where you are trying to help but you cause harm uh when you do that so 
I am not looking forward to this film other than to expose the flaws in what is going on at the Walt Disney Company. Now, now there, there's of course some some sliver of a possibility that they will thread the needle here. I will I will allow for that, but I'm not going to allow for it by letting my children watch this thing without it being thoroughly vetted by an adult. Well, I think uh, I think Bob Iger shares our enthusiasm with this film because I don't. I mean, he didn't really reference it all that much during. Oh, the he's very Stanley excited conference. about Deadpool three. Yes. Also, yeah, right? De- De- Deadpool being a character that is sometimes marketed to kids. If you don't understand that, go go look at the Lego stuff that uh, the Lego Marvel stuff that they do for uh, for shows on uh, Disney Plus and things like that. Yes, they do market Deadpool to kids. Now that is rated R, so no co- kids should be allowed into the theater. Different, different animal here, but it is the only Marvel movie coming out this year and is Disney's best chance at a billion dollars, according to Bob Iger. So Disney has a big problem this year. A lot of things that are, are borderline or definitely not appropriate for kids, and they need kids to show up to these things in order to make a billion dollars. So Right. And in years prior, could you ever imagine the CEO of the Walt Disney Company saying that their rated R film for the summer was going to necessarily be uh, uh, maybe more successful or had higher demand or enthusiasm attached to it than an animated work by Pixar or maybe even, uh, you know, their own Disney studios? I mean, that's that's interesting. That That's a, yep. it's not and- something that we've seen before. And, and here's the thing I'm going to level at Disney. I, I think that there is an element within the company that wants to have children's entertainment, but they're, they've lost focus here. And Disney, you really need to focus on where, where your bread is buttered here. Now, that being said, uh, I, we've said a lot of things. I personally have said a, thing, a lot of things that are probably a little controversial and would invite some kind of uh, reaction from the audience here. So if you want to leave a comment, I welcome you to it. I'm I'm not scared if you disagree with me. Go ahead and do that. Like this video if you think the conversation has been helpful in any way. And of course, consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.